Good morning. morning. What a beautiful way to begin the service. Thank you. Welcome to Roseburg First United Methodist Church. My name is Jeffrey Hall, and I have the privilege of serving this congregation who believes all means all. That whoever you are and wherever you may be on your journey of faith, you are loved by God, and you are welcome here. Whether you are on our beautiful campus or watching online, we're delighted you're with us and pray that our time together in the presence of the risen Christ might provide you all of the necessary strength and sufficient grace you need uh, as you follow Jesus. Several announcements this morning. You are invited to attend the United Women in Faith's July luncheon on Saturday the 22nd. This time of fellowship will be hosted at Judy Dake's house, 11 a.m., and a carpool uh, to Judy's will be meeting at, uh, let's see, Staples parking lot? Yep, I'm seeing nodding, okay. 1015. There's a sign-up sheet in the narthex today, and you can RSVP by calling the number uh, printed in the announcement. Also, United Women in Faith Soul Care Retreat is coming up. Registration is limited, and I understand that it's filling up. So um, go ahead. You can find out more information on how to register in your program. Before leaving today, please be sure to uh, take a look at the clipboards in the narthex and sign up um, as an usher or to help with coffee hour or as a worship assistant. You'll note also Tai Chi classes Monday and Wednesdays, 11 to 12. Red Wagon is back in the narthex. Non-perishable food items are greatly appreciated. And if you're interested in becoming a member here at First UMC, please be sure to email me. You'll see in the announcements I have my email there. Please be sure to go ahead and email me, and uh, we can talk about that. The altar flowers, which are beautiful this morning, are provided by Nancy Dick. And Nancy, as you see in your bulletin, was scheduled to be the worship assistant uh, today, but unfortunately is ill. And so um, I have asked Jennifer to uh, assist today, and she has graciously accepted my invitation. <laughs> Thank you, Jennifer. <laughs> But please remember Nancy um, in your prayers, okay, later today. All right. The rite of friendship or passing God's peace is a tradition uh, that many of you probably know goes back to the early churches. And so let's take time uh, to connect and greet one another in the spirit of love and friendship. Let's do that now. like to invite you back to your... I have no illusion that I'm in control, by the way. <laughs> this time I'd like to invite Jennifer to lead us in the call to worship. Good morning. Good morning. Please stand for the call to worship and remain standing for the opening prayer and hymn. 
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Come, all who are weary and carry heavy burdens. Christ will give us rest. Come, all who would receive forgiveness and grace. Christ will give us strength. Come, all who labor. Christ will teach us the way that leads to life. Please join me in prayer. Holy Sustainer, let your compassion come speedily to meet us here. Open our ears to hear your voice. Open our eyes to behold your grace in every surrounding face. Open our hearts to the unfolding of your wondrous love. In the name and way of Christ, we pray. Amen. reading from Psalm 145, verses 8 through 14. The Lord is gracious and merciful, 
slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. The Lord is good to all, and his, companion is, his compassion is over all that has, he has made. All your works shall give you thanks, O Lord, and, and all your faithful shall bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom and tell of your power to make known to all people your mighty deeds and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and your dominion endures throughout all generations. The Lord is faithful in all his words and gracious in all his deeds. The Lord upholds all who are falling and raises up all who are bowed down. This is a sacred time, and it's one that I'm so um, happy that this church honors, where we take time to acknowledge the prayers that we bring and the prayers that we have and hold for one another. Um, I want you to know that one of the first things I did when I arrived here was I asked for a directory. And one of the reasons for that is, well, it's helpful for me to have your contact information so I can reach out to you when it comes to serving on committees <laughs> and tithing <laughs> and all of that. <laughs> <laughs> but the other reason is, is because what I do is throughout the year, I work through the directory and I pray for each and every one of you in that directory. And so, uh, and I invite you to please continue to pray for Jennifer and me as we uh, get settled this first year. A number of you have asked us how we are doing and how we're settling in and how's the unpacking going. Slowly. <laughs> <laughs> we are still unboxing and unpacking, but we're doing it one box at a time, and that's sort of the way that I live my life, one step at a time, one box at a time, one bill at a time, right? Um, but, um, but we're doing it. Uh, we've, we're off to a good start here these first couple weeks. I've already received my state identification card, <laughs> otherwise known as the Bymar card. <laughs> huh? Right? It was one of the first things we did. 
And we have experienced this community and we're very thankful. And this is really a joy that I want to share with you. We have just in these early weeks experienced this community as very, and I'm not just saying this, I mean it, as very, very friendly. And this includes visits to emergency rooms in hospitals, right? Very friendly. Uh, restaurants, um, grocery stores, very friendly. And um, the pace is slower. I, even the drivers are fr Now, hold on. <laughs> One of the things I'm looking forward to the most, my registration expires October. And one of the things I'm looking forward to the most is getting those California plates off my car. <laughs> no, but thank you for asking, and know that um, we're, off to a, we're off to a fine start, and we are happy to have found a home here in Roseburg with you. All right. So I'll offer a pastoral prayer, and then, of course, you'll be invited to offer your prayers as well. Let us pray. Welcoming one, we come before your throne of grace today. It's been quite a week for some, filled with busyness and exciting activities. For others, it's been a long and lonely week. Still, others have experienced ongoing troubles and frustrations, sorrows and sadness. Throughout all these conditions and all times, you are with us, giving us strength, calming our spirits, healing our wounds, celebrating the good we do in this world, however great or modest. We confess there have been times, O oh God, of doubt, moments when we are overwhelmed with difficulty and we falter and perhaps fall. Open our spirits to your redeeming and healing power. Help us to share one another's burdens and give us peace. This morning we name in our hearts and by our voices loved ones who struggle with issues of health, loneliness, sorrow. We name in our hearts and by our voices those who have found great joy. You're invited to offer your prayers at this time. Heavenly Father, look after our children and especially those who are in a strife or anguish and heartache and also those who have been hurt through their own stupidity. But uh, all this we ask that you bless them help them become stronger in mind, spirit, and heart. All this we ask in Jesus' name. Be with each person, O oh God, giving strength and courage. Help each one of us to remember we can always come to you with our burdens you will bear them with us as we pray the prayer Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Jesus says the yoke is easy and the burden is light. Here at Roseburg First, where all means all, we worship with our tithes and offering, knowing your gift is stronger when it's given with mine. And his 
and hers and theirs. And that together, together, we can serve the needs of this community and the world around us. You may place your gift in the offering box in the narthex, drop it by the church office or mail it to the office or by going to our webpage and making your contribution electronically. I want to thank you for your faithfulness and your generosity. Let us pray. Oh God, you invite us to share the load through these gifts. We see that your yoke is easy and your burden is light. Use them with us to your service. Multiply them through us for your use <coughs> so that together we might bring light and beauty into this weary world. Amen. from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 11, verses 16 through 19, and 25 through 30. But to what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplace and calling to one another. We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We wailed, <laughs> and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, he has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, 
Look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners, yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The piano, the flute, those notes were just sort of, where they were just lifting me right out through that window and up over those trees. This view is just beautiful. Dear Olivia, I am writing this letter to you on November 27th, 1999, your father's 31st birthday. I want to tell you the story about your father, Will Smith, and about your years together at Bodwin College. One day, you will probably ask him about these years when he was a single dad with a young daughter struggling to stay in school to compete in a Division III basketball program and provide a home for both of you. Everyone knows how modest your father is, so I suspect he will leave out a lot of the details. Your father's story begins far from Bodwin in the northwest section of Jacksonville, Florida. So when you see your father, when you ask him about his caring, you are also seeing a woman you never knew, your grandmother, Mildred. Your father said, my mother was the most incredible person I ever met. I was the last of 10 children she raised. She worked every day and still found time to coach basketball. Everybody in Jacksonville knew the Smith boys because they were athletes. Will played sports year-round. His mother never missed a game. She even learned how to drive at the age of 50 so she could go to his games as he got older and traveled. In May 1989, three years after graduating high school, your father enlisted in the Navy. He was trained as an aviation electronics technician. And he's seen a lot of the world, Sic Sicily, Bosnia, Saudi Arabia, Iceland, Greenland, Panama, and he served during the Gulf War, 1991. Each day at the Naval Air Station in Brunswick, Maine, when your dad finished work, he'd head to the gym for pickup basketball. But he wanted to do more with his time, so he also volunteered as a football coach at a nearby high school. He said, I'm best as a human being when I have others besides myself to focus on. Aren't we all? I was 22 years old, Will said, and I had 60 white kids on my teams. Most of them had never been in contact with a black man. I had no problem with the kids. It was their parents learning to adjust to a black man coaching their kids. That was the challenge. During the summer while coaching basketball camp, your father's ability and character caught the attention and eye of Tim Gilbride, Bodwin's men's basketball coach. Coach Gilbride asked your father if he had ever considered 
going to college? And would he like to apply to Bodwin? Well, he was at a professional crossroads. He served seven years and was due to re-enlist. His last day of active duty was April 25th, 1996, the day he took full custody of his 11-month-old daughter. Will applied to Bodwin, though Will had been accepted, he did not know the, the questions to ask, questions that, you know, so many college students take for granted. He didn't know how to apply for student aid. He didn't know how to apply for room and board. He started classes in September 1996. You were 14 months old, and he had no choice but to bring you to class with him. Your father called you my complex joy. <laughs> Isn't that marvelous? My complex joy. He said, I know people look at it as a disadvantage having Olivia. I see it as an advantage. There were nights I was dead tired, ready to quit on papers, but then I would look in on Olivia sleeping and turn right around and go back to my paper. Over half of Bodwin students arrive from lives of privilege and private schools. Your father came from the Navy a decade after graduating public school. College administrators say Will is the first single father to attend Boatwin. The money he had saved from the Navy went faster than he could have ever imagined. Some weeks he didn't eat for a couple days. Coach didn't know. One day he said to himself, I, I can't make it. I can't make it. This is this, this is just too hard. What he told his advisor was simply that things are too hard for me right now. And for the first time, Will told her about his struggles, and the advisor called Betty Trout Kelly. That was her name. And on Sunday afternoon, late in the fall semester, Betty Trout Kelly sat Will down in her car, she said, I told him, I know you feel you shouldn't need help. You shouldn't need a support system. But if you don't accept the help we can offer, you won't make it. If you don't accept help, you won't make it. Our gospel reading this morning contains one of the great consolations of the Christian faith for anyone who has ever needed, I mean really needed, help. The kind of help you need on your drive home after you've just been let go from work. The kind of help you need when you've just had your third miscarriage or when you're child has just been diagnosed with leukemia, or when you're slipping deeper and deeper into a depression and you're afraid you're never going to come out of it. The kind of help you need a week after a memorial service when all of your friends and family, they've returned to their lives and you're left alone in an empty house kind of help you need when you're trying to get a college education, raise a little girl, pass your classes, pay your bills, and when you're bent with broken, when bent with burden and almost broken because life has exacted its indifferent toll on you. That kind of help. 
I don't know who specifically Jesus was talking to in this passage. Scripture tells us he was speaking to the crowds. I like to think he's speaking to everyone. Many scholars understandably say it was a prayer of sorts. And I know that on more than one occasion, he was speaking to me. Or perhaps, at least in his way, he was praying for me. Frederick Beekner comments, if you want to know what loving your enemy is all about, or loving your neighbors is all about, look at them with more than just your eyes. The bag lady settling down for the night on the hot air grating. The two children chirping like birds in branches up in a tree. The bride as she walks down the aisle on her father's arm. The old man staring into space in a nursing home TV room. Try to know them for who they are inside their skins. Hear not just the words they speak, but the words they do not speak. Feel what it feels like to be who they are, chirping like a bird. Because for a moment, you are a bird, trying not to wobble as you move slowly into the future with all eyes upon you. When Jesus said, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. He was seeing the rich as well as the poor. He was seeing the lucky as well as the unlucky. He was seeing the idle as well as the industrious. He was seeing the bride on her wedding day. And he was seeing the old man in front of the TV. He was seeing all of us. All of you. Come to me, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Some of you may know that there are two basic kinds of yokes that can be used to bear burdens. Single ones and shared ones. Single yokes are placed on your shoulders of an individual and the buckets are hung on the sides. It's said a human being can carry almost as much as a donkey but will tire easily and our shoulders and back will eventually give out. At 54, I believe it. A shared yoke is different. As Barbara Brown Taylor put it, it requires twice as many creatures, and if they are well-matched pair, they can work all day. Because under a shared yoke, one can rest while the other pulls. They can draw strength from each other. They can take turns bearing the burden. They can share the burden together. They have company all day long, and when the day is done, both may be tired, but neither are exhausted because they are a team. Now, if I'm doing my job halfway well this morning, some of you are writing the rest of the sermon. Catholic priest Michael Renninger writes, 47 years ago this week, my family moved to a new home in Pennsylvania. It was a very large, or a very rural part of Pennsylvania. The road on which we lived was gravel. There was never much traffic. Our closest neighbor, let's call him Mr. B had some farmland that bordered our own. Mr. B didn't raise any crops. He raised sheep. And we found, as we found out later, his sheep 
were very good at finding their way through the fences and onto our lawn and into my mother's garden. Mr. B had some cows, some goats, and a few ducks. On the very first night that we were in our new home, we discovered that Mr. B had two more animals. He had two donkeys. We had not seen them as we moved in. But at about 5 o'clock in the morning on the first night, we heard them. The two donkeys started braying loudly before sunrise, and they kept making that god-awful noise until they were fed around 6.30. And they would start going, and the noise would just echo through the, down the valley. Later that day, I saw Mr. B, and I asked him if these two loud donkeys had names. And he told me that their names were, are you ready? <laughs> Comfort and joy. <laughs> <laughs> Trying not to sound like a complaining neighbor, I, <laughs> I asked him why he had donkeys in the first place. And he explained that he had an old mechanical sickle bar. And it's the kind of farm implement which he used to cut hay. And he would put a yoke on comfort and joy. And using that yoke, he would hitch the two donkeys to the sickle bar and cut his hay. Now, I was only about eight years old. But even I knew that a modern tractor could do the job. And tractors don't start making noise at 5 o'clock in the morning. But I didn't say that to Mr. B. Renninger says, well, those donkeys ruined my sleep for most of that summer. I even began to pray that God would take them to donkey heaven. <laughs> so imagine my guilt when, in late August, comfort died. Only joy was left. When I saw Mr. B a few days later, he was in the process of loading up, loading up that old sickle bar onto his truck. And when I asked him why he was getting rid of it, he said, this weighs too much for just one donkey. Weighs too much for just one donkey to pull it. Joy can't do it on her own. And besides, he said, the yoke I have built <coughs> is built so that the two of them could walk side by side. This yoke won't work if only one tries to wear it. This yoke won't work if only one tries to wear it. That's what I think Jesus is talking about in this passage. I think he is saying the way we get through this life is with someone. That none of us can bear the burden of this life alone. That we are going to need help along the way. That he is here to share the yoke. He is here to share the burden. He is here to help sharing the yoke together. You and me sharing the yoke together, you and your neighbor sharing the yoke together, someone to pull while we rest, someone to rest who can rest while we pull, arm in arm, hand in hand, shoulder to shoulder, side by side, sharing the work of ministry together. That's what we're going to be doing, sharing the work of ministry together, helping each other, sharing the yoke. Okay. In a radio interview on NPR's StoryCorps, Olivia Smith, the daughter who was getting ready to go off to college herself, asked her father, who just completed his last chemo treatment, by the way, asked her father, 
were you ever embarrassed bringing me to class or just having me in general? I felt a little awkward, he said, but never embarrassed. There were times when the only way I could get through it was to come into your room and look at you and see you sleeping and go back to my studies. And my graduation day from Bodwin is a day I'll never forget, he said. You know, all of my classmates, they stood up and gave me the only standing ovation. Olivia says, I remember, I remember walking up with you and having my head in your shoulder. Yeah, Will said. The dean called both our names as he presented us with the diploma. So technically, I already graduated from college, <laughs> Olivia said. <laughs> nice try. The degree only has my name on it. Olivia, I really admire your strength. Dad, I draw strength from you. I always have and still do. <clears throat> Betty Trout Kelly was right. If we don't accept help, we won't make it. We need each other. We need Christ. We need to share the yoke. Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, for I am gentle, and I am humble in heart. And you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Thanks be to God. Amen. Shall we rise to our feet and sing our closing hymn together?
before you were born, God knew you. You're not an accident, although those may occur, and you're not a mistake, although you and I make them. You are fearfully and wonderfully made, beloved and blessed by God. Go now into the world and offer it your blessing. Go knowing no matter where you go or where I go, all the ground between us and before us, every inch of it is holy ground. Go now in peace.